welcome to PCM's Microsoft News and Updates webcast. Today we have with us Blair Loveland, Microsoft Specialist, and John Pontius, Microsoft Solutions Consultant. We're going to get into the presentation in just a moment, um, but first there's a few, a few housekeeping items. Um, we'll be asking questions, or you'll be asking questions at the end. Um, there's an orange arrow button on your control panel there. If you hit that and type in your questions, we'll be able to answer them at the end of the webinar. Also, there will be a survey and email to you. In the survey, we will be looking for ideas and other suggestions for webinars. Um, so if you could kindly fill that out and send it back to us. And then lastly, there will be a recording of this webinar and it will be available at uh, pcm.com slash webinars. A lot of you are familiar with PCM and what we do. Um, we're a solutions and service provider and um, we leverage certified personnel, valuable partnerships, and processes to scale and achieve our clients' IT objectives. Contact us via our website at pcm.com or by calling 1-800-700-1000. And now I will hand it over to Blair and John. All right, thank you, Alicia. I'll go ahead and get my screen presented here. So again, my name is Blair Lovell and I am your Microsoft Readiness Specialist. And uh, today we're being joined by John Pontius, who's the manager of our uh, solutions consultant team, who's gonna have some really great content for you. So let's go ahead and start off with um, our agenda for today. You know, it's a little short of an agenda, but it's gonna be some really great topics that I know you're really gonna take a lot home with. So first we're gonna talk about how to jumpstart your IT projects with PCM. And then we're going to uh, talk a little bit about what is the Windows Virtual Desktop. You've probably heard a lot about that lately with some end of support uh, and end of life uh, topics coming up. Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, introduce you to Microsoft Kaizala and then the Microsoft uh, Surface Spring promotion. So I am going to hand it off right now to uh, Mr. John Pontius, who is going to uh, lead you through jumpstarting your projects with uh, PCM. Thanks very much, Blair, and thanks everybody for attending today. Um, so I want to talk to you guys a little bit about jumpstarting your project, your IT projects and your cloud journey with PCM. So when we're going out there and we're talking to our clients and customers, what we're hearing a lot is that we want to move to the cloud. We're trying to take advantage of the cloud. We're trying to take advantage of Microsoft SaaS services like Office 365, Microsoft 365, and Azure Active Directory. We're trying to take advantage of public cloud services like infrastructure as a service and platform as a service with Azure. But we don't necessarily know where to start. We know where we want to go. But we don't necessarily know how to get there. And so PCM wants to help you find value faster and find return on your investment faster with these cloud solutions. And the way we want to do that is to help you jumpstart your IT project. So what are PCM jumpstarts? PCM jumpstarts are concise engagements expertly def designed by our engineers that combine training and practical implementation and follow best practices with a security first mindset. They're intended to get you and your company up and running in the cloud quickly and efficiently without overwhelming you with noise. Again, trying to help you find time to value faster, trying to help you find return on investment faster, trying to help you meet your business objectives with cloud technologies faster than you would be able to if you relied on your own internal teams, internal project managers, et cetera. So if you wanna move forward. So what does this, this mean for you guys? What does this mean for organizations that are looking at taking advantage of the cloud. One of the things that we know is that 60% of CIOs expect their budget to increase in 2019. And much of that spend is expected to move to cloud technologies, whether that's SaaS, whether that's IaaS, whether that's PaaS, whether that's public cloud, et cetera. 60% expect their budget to increase. Most of that is going to go to the cloud. So IoT leaders are looking for innovative ways to deliver services and projects needed by their organization. They're looking for ways to meet their business objectives with the cloud. But what we're finding is that lots of times there are challenges with internal skill sets. There are challenges with bandwidth for taking on new projects. There are challenges with knowing where to start in the cloud. And the result of that is that lots of customers that are looking at moving to the cloud tend to do it in fits and starts. They'll move forward and then they'll They'll take two steps forward, one step backward. They'll move a little bit of the way in the cloud, and then for whatever reason, the project will stall. And so they have trouble 
getting the most value out of their investments, getting the most value out of the cloud. They have trouble understanding or making sure that they're deploying, that they're implementing, that they're doing their proof of concepts correctly the first time. And if they're not, they're having to go back later and say, oh man, if we had known now six months ago, if we know what we know now six months ago when we started this, we would have done this much differently. And so now you've either got technical debt created by that, or you have another project of deployment and re-implementation of a solution to make it fit best practices, make it secure. So what do jump PCM jumpstarts do? Well, they combine on-site training, whiteboard and roadmap, and a working environment. So we're going to come on-site or remote, and we're going to train your organization and your staff on the features and functionality of the services. And we're going to tell you how to expertly implement them and deploy the service in the future for your organization. We're going to whiteboard and roadmap. We're going to talk about how this service looks in your environment and how this service will help you meet your business objectives and provide you with a launch pad using these technologies for future projects. And finally, we're going to provide you a working environment. We're going to leave you with a built to best practices environment for the technology in question that your organization can use to pilot, to proof of concept, or to continue to build out and deploy as you expand the scope of the technology beyond the initial set of users and into the broader organization. So what offers do we have available today? What jump starts do we have available right now that your organization can take advantage of as, with regards to uh, Microsoft Cloud Technologies? We have a couple of Azure ones, a couple of ones that focus on the public cloud. The first one is our Azure Infrastructure as a Service Jumpstart. So lots of organizations are making the move to the public cloud, and lots of organizations are starting their journey with what we might call a, a lift and shift model. You know, I want flexibility, I want scalability, uh, I want to get out of my data center, I want to get out of my cola, I want to get out of the hardware business. I'm going to move to virtual machines, I'm going to move to a virtual network, I'm going to move to virtual storage. Our Azure Infrastructure as a Service Jumpstart helps your team understand the power of infrastructure as a service in Azure, helps you understand where infrastructure as a service can be valuable and beneficial to your organization, and leaves behind a, a, an environment that has connectivity, that has identity, that has security, that you can start moving workloads, moving applications, or building new virtual machines and new applications in the cloud. So we combine, again, that, that training, that knowledge transfer of how infrastructure as a service in Azure works, what are the best practices with an environment that you can start building out for your organization um, using Microsoft Azure IS services. We also have an Azure PaaS jumpstart. So organizations get into the public cloud, they're looking at infrastructure as a service, they're looking at virtual machines, they're looking at virtual storage. And they say, what I really am looking for is to harness the power of the cloud. I want to take advantage of the of the cloud, the native cloud services that the public cloud has to offer. I want to, if you guys are familiar with the IaaS PaaS concept, I want to start abstracting more layers of the architecture of the stack away from me. I want Microsoft to handle the VM. I want Microsoft to handle the SQL server. What I want to focus on is my database. What I want to focus on is my application. I want to build this thing cloud natively and I want to build it to scale globally. Our Azure Platform as a Service Jumpstart helps with that. Helps you understand how to transition or how to build new services in the cloud taking advantage of those cloud native services. Helps you understand where Platform as a Service and PaaS offerings can make sense for your business. And then leaves behind an environment, a platform environment that you can start deploying applications into right away. We have a Windows Autopilot Jumpstart. So, if anybody here on the call is familiar with Autopilot, Autopilot is Microsoft's new touchless deployment for Windows 10. So you can literally send your employees a laptop out of the box from Microsoft with a Surface, from Dell, from Lenovo. Employee gets it out of the box, logs in, the image gets put on, the applications get put on. It never has to go through a depot. It never has to touch IT. But you can make sure that it's secure and in line with your corporate guidance and your image. Windows Autopilot's seeing a lot of adoption. A lot of organizations don't necessarily know how to register those devices, how to get those devices into the cloud, how to make sure that the images and the applications that they want pushed to those devices uh, work for Windows 10. So our Autopilot Jumpstart helps get you started with Windows Autopilot, understand how Autopilot can work for you, 
and then gives you an environment, a set of policies and deployment images for your environment that you can start building out a deployment strategy and imaging strategy, et cetera. We have a disaster recovery and back business continuity, DRBC jumpstart. So for, if you guys are familiar, the true disaster recovery and business continuity used to, is traditionally an extremely expensive task. It costs a lot of money to have an entirely secondary data center running your applications, contributing to um, resiliency, redundancy, having that synchronization of data. But the cloud is making this more uh, affordable and how the cloud is enabling disaster recovery and business continuity strategies. And then we're gonna leave you with a working environment, DRBC, that you can start to build on. Microsoft Teams Jumpstart. Microsoft is transitioning away from the traditional Skype link, Skype for business kind of chat mentality and into Microsoft Teams, which is a center, a hub for collaboration across your organization and across Microsoft 365. How does that transition happen? How do you take your, or your organization from a traditional Skype environment to Microsoft Teams? How do you make sure that your users are aware of the incredible power and functionality that Teams has to offer? Much more than just a chat client, but a hub for collaboration, a center for your, for your organization and your end users to view their files, collaborate on documents, et cetera. We're gonna tell you how to do that. We're gonna leave you with an a Teams environment and a set of users that are gonna be able to help evangelize the technology throughout your organization, are gonna help understand how powerful a tool Teams can be. SharePoint, SharePoint, uh, internal internet sites, uh, document repository, content management systems. You know, I have employees that I want to make HR documents available. I have places where I want people to uh, store and save documents, be able to share them, be able to version them, be able to control who has access to them. Helping you understand how SharePoint can benefit your business and then leaving you with a basic intranet site, again, that you can start to build out, that you can uh, build on top of knowing that your policies, your security, et cetera, is built into that. Identity and access, this is so important. So. Microsoft really sees, anybody here who's using Office 365, who's using Azure Active Directory, Microsoft really sees identity as the new security perimeter. So no longer, it, it's, it's not the purview of a physical boundary like a building or the domain in the firewall. Now we have customers that are, or end users that are accessing from mobile devices, from BYOD. How do we protect that? Well, Microsoft what we're seeing is that identity is the new security perimeter. Being able to protect those identities that are accessing is going to be so crucial to building secure enterprises right now and in the future. So we're going to help you understand how Azure Active Directory Premium enables identity and access security. We're going to leave you behind an environment that has conditional access. So these employees can access only when they're on CorpNet. Uh, these users can access when they're at home, but only if they have a multi-factor authentication challenge. I'll leave that behind that you can extend to the rest of your organization and your users. Finally, a Microsoft 365 security jumpstart. Outside of identity and access, outside of conditional access and multi-factor authentication, Microsoft 365 has so many powerful tools can help you protect your email environment from data loss prevention to exchange online protection, making sure that as your employees use email, which is still the most common collaborative tool in the environment, that they're secure, that your environment is secure, et cetera. So we're going to talk to you about what Microsoft 365 can bring from an email uh, protection perspective and how your organization can use it and leave behind those policies and those templates that you can then deploy to your organization. So again, all of these have the similar mindset, right? Helping you find value faster in the cloud, giving you the knowledge you need about the tools that you've invested in to make sure that you can meet your business objectives and get a return on that investment faster with PCM. So all of these are available, guys. We have a website, www.pcm.jumpstart, that has some information that you guys can see. Or obviously, you can reach out to your PCM account executive or to myself. We would love to talk to you about these jumpstarts and how PCM can help you guys jumpstart your IT journey and start realizing the value of the cloud faster in your organizations. So Blair, thanks for giving me, looks like about 15 minutes here.
uh, I will hand it back to you. Guys, especially for those last two, Identity and Access Jumpstart, Microsoft Security Jumpstart, I know we have another webinar coming up, uh, I believe next Thursday, that really focuses on Microsoft 365 Security. So if that's a place where you're having challenges or you really want to start you know, seeing what Microsoft 365 can do for your organization, especially if you've made investments in Microsoft 365 already, whether it's the E3, E5, O365 suite, so I would encourage you guys to check out that webinar. There's going to be a lot more goodness on what's available to you. Um, but again, uh, pcm.com slash jumpstarts. Uh, we also have envisioning sessions. So again, we have that webinar next Thursday. But if you want to deep dive on some of these uh, solutions, if you want to understand more holistically what's available and, and what Jumpstart can really help you, you're looking at this and going, these all look great. I, I love it, but I, I don't even know where to start with the Jumpstarts. I just need to understand. I need to envision where Microsoft technologies help my environment. We have envisioning sessions that can help you get there. Please reach out to your PCM account executive uh, and they'll get you set up with that. But Blair, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, right, well, thank you, John, very much. That was, that was awesome. And again, everybody, uh, you a number of places you can get um, information and access with. As you saw, pcm.com slash jumpstart. You can go to pcm.com slash envision to set up an envisioning session. And, um, you know, we're gonna, we're, we still have some more slides to go through. We're not done yet, so please don't uh, go away. But also, if, uh, the ref, if you want to reference the uh, or view the, uh, join the webinar that we're going to have next week around Microsoft 365 you know, security, you know, Register at pcm.com slash webinars, and I'll be re revisiting those at the end of the, the, the call as well today. So next, we wanted to introduce you guys to uh, what is Windows Virtual Desktop. You guys have probably heard a lot about that because that's one of the features, you know, to get extended security updates with, you know, with the Windows and Windows Server you know, end of life coming up. So, but we still got a lot of questions about, you know, just what is Windows Virtual Desktop? So. It's basically a desktop and application virtualization service that runs in the cloud. So some of the things you can do when you run Windows Virtual Desktop on Azure, is you can set up multi-session Windows 10 deployments and deliver that full Windows 10 experience with the scalability of Azure. You can virtualize your Office 365 Pro Plus and, and even optimize it to run in multi-user virtual scenarios and again, like we've talked about, the, you can get Windows 7 virtual desktops with the free extended security updates. You can even bring your remote desktop services and Windows Server desktops and applications really to any computer. And then you can also manage your, you know, not just your Windows 10, but Windows Server, Windows 7 desktops and the applications with that unified you know, management experience. So this, aside from what you can do with it, there are some you know, key capabilities that, that you can really take advantage of when you set up that scalable and flexible environment of Windows Virtual Desktop in Azure. Uh, again, you can create the full desktop virtualization environment in your Azure subscription without having to run any additional gateway servers. So that's less work for you to do. You can publish as many host pools as you need to accommodate your you know, diverse workloads with your workforce. And you can even bring your own image for production workloads or even you know test images from the Azure Azure gallery. But you do want to make sure that you have the appropriate licenses for your users based upon the desktop and the apps that you plan to employ. So naturally, you're going to need the you know, required operating system license, which is typically Windows 10 Enterprise um, you know, or Windows 10 Enterprise with Microsoft 365, you know, the listed suites here, um, Windows 7 Enterprise or with Microsoft 365 to E3A5 or A3A5 suites for education folks out there. Um, the Windows E3 or E5 standalone per user, and also Windows Server 2012, R2, 2016, 2019, um, as well as the RDS, you know, your uh, client access licenses uh, with software assurance. So I know it can get pretty deep depend and pretty complex you know, as far as understanding what you can do with it and all the things you can do with it and where you need to start, especially given the number of you know, scenarios that you can deploy with the Windows Virtual Desktop. So to get the best answers and really explore, you know, where you're at, what you want to do, where you want to go with our experts, you know, set up a Microsoft Modern Licensing and Visioning session with um, our, micro, our PCM Microsoft team at www.pcm.com slash envision, and we'll have that, you know, full interactive conversation with you and, you know, again, find out what you want to do and what's the best Microsoft solution to, uh, to get you there. 
Next, we want to introduce you to Microsoft Kaizala. Um, good way to think about her, Kaizala is call her uh, Cortana's sister. And she's a simple and secure mobile chat app for work. So it's, it's a phone, so still basically what is it? What is Kaizala? It's a phone number based, simple and secure mobile chat app that enables you to connect and coordinate work across your network or your organization, your vendors, partners, suppliers, and customers. And it's available with Office 365 and works on iPhone and Android phone. And we received a couple of questions already. You know, is this replacing Teams? No, it is not. Um, it's a standalone application that can work with Teams or can work outside of Teams, you know, whatever you want to do with your organization. But it has some really cool features to really engage with your workforce. You can get feedback from your users really about anything you want. Um, so you can send out polls or surveys. Um, and any, all the responses that you receive are automatically aggregated and presented in easy to view reports with, with you know, which helps in that business decision making. You can also you know, connect and coordinate your across your entire network. You can uh, connect with a few people or the whole organization. You know, you can set up groups, you can share text, documents, photos, videos, and just a few taps. You can also customize group types to meet those you know, unique communication needs. And you can even get work done over the chat. You know, you, you can you work using built-in applications such as poll, survey, you know, job training, you know, and more. You, you can customize or build your own you know, apps based on your needs. And again, you can gather insights from the built-in analytics and reporting, or you can customize it as needed. So a key feature is that, that we keep hearing is um, you know, the customization ability of this. And that helps you digitize your business process. You know, it uses open APIs to integrate with you know, whatever your line of business systems happen to be using, you can automate your business workflows with Office 365 integration and integrates, you know, SharePoint, Flow, Excel, even Power BI. And most importantly, since you're using this at your enterprise, you can manage and secure your data. Uh, the Kaizala management portal, you can manage your users and your groups. You can also assign the group policies, enforce Azure Active Directory sign in and, and, and more. And it does meet you know, compliance requirements such as GDPR, HIPAA, ISO 27001, and SOC 1, and others. So there are a couple of different versions of Kaizala out there that you want to be aware of. There's actually the, the free app, which is just basically your one-to-one -one group chats, media and document sharing, you know, work management. But really, to get the full experience and including the management and the compliance and the security and the group policies, you want to you know, get to Kaizala Pro. And that includes all the benefits of the Kazala free app, plus the group management, the user management. Um, you can even remove users from groups and then you know, wipe group data from the device. You can publish custom actions. It provides the advanced reporting and analytics. And that's the, you know, Kazala Pro has the system integration and automation using the Kazala APIs. So next we want to close out today with the uh, spring surface sale. Um, it's spring. And what a better time to have a Surface promotion, spring into Surface. Um, now through June 30th, this promotion has been running for about a month or so now. It's a really awesome uh, promotion for those of you who are ready or who want to up upgrade uh, your laptops. You can save up to $200 on the latest Surface for Business devices. So all Surface you know, for Business devices, they ship with Windows 10 Pro, and so you can get the advanced security protection. In addition, you have Surface for Laptop 2 for business and Surface Pro 6 for business also offer premium support with Advanced Exchange Service. So really, Surface devices are a better way to experience the familiarity, protection, and innovation in Microsoft 365. And there's a bunch of different Surface devices depending on, on your role um, in your organization and what you're looking for, honestly. You know, the Surface Go is a, it's a small, lightweight tablet. It also has LTE capability. The Surface Pro and the Surface laptops and the Surface Books, really for your, your power users, they're on the, you know, you're on the go, you need to do customer presentations, you're looking for that lightweight, um, sleek you know, device to show your customers off that you're best in class, provides super long battery life, and really is the, you know, the, the way of the future. And then Surface Studio, it's a larger screen, it's more for desktop use, you can you know, flex the screen, it can turn into a flat board, or you know, it's a larger screen, it really is great for you know, those folks who uh, do design or, or CAD or designing, even gra you know, graphics and video presentation. So again, a lot of different options depending on who in your organization is doing what. And it also comes with a lot of you know, made just for Surface accessories too. There's the Surface Pen, uh, the Surface Dial, which helps you um, 
manipulate around the, the, the screen as well. Surface mice, uh, surface type covers, you know, protect your device, uh, surface headphones, as well as, you know, surface docks, adapters, and more. So it's really, you're not just buying a laptop, you're buying the whole family of accessories to make that um, the best experience and the best um, productivity device on the planet. So again, to learn a little more about the Microsoft Surface and the promotion, um, set up a modern workplace envisioning session at pcm.com slash envision. So that's really all the content I had for you today. Again, just wanted to revisit a couple of those links for you here to learn about the jumpstart sessions that John had talked about earlier. You, know, you want to visit uh, www.pcm.com slash jumpstart. And again, for not just uh, our upcoming webinars or today, if you really want to rewatch today's webinar, but yeah, we actually have publish a, a couple of different webinars per month. There's uh, today's news and updates webinar that keeps you up to date on the latest and greatest you know, news and updates and hot topics. But also once a month, we offer a more of a topical webinar um, that's dedicated to a specific topic or technology. For example, next week on Thursday the 20th at 2 p.m. Eastern, it's going to be on uh, Microsoft 365 you know, security. Security is huge nowadays. So for our webinars, where you want to revisit an old webinar or register for future webinars, please visit www.pcm.com slash webinars. And um, you know, I'm going to hand it off next to Alicia, who is uh, going to close us out today. So Alicia, over to you. Thanks, Blair. It looks like we do have a couple of questions here. So um, with the remaining time, we'll just go through them. I will read the first one. Let's see. Let's hold on. Okay, the first question is, is team going to replace Skype? The long-term plan is for teams to be the all-in-one all in productivity portal. Uh, and John, if you're still on here, if you want to jump on that one. Uh, but eventually, I think the plan is for teams to to replace Skype. Are, are you, do you have anything to add to that, John? No, I, I would say not even long-term. Um, the on-premise deployment of Skype for Business, if you're still using a Skype for Business server, uh, you know, that there is still a version out there you can use that but when you're talking about uh, Microsoft 365 in the suite we are already seeing for certain size brand new users in Office 365 that Skype doesn't even exist anymore in the tenant they've already transitioned them to teams so if you are using Skype in that environment uh, you probably have already got some communications from Microsoft already but yes uh, from a cloud perspective, absolutely, Microsoft Teams will take over um, in rather short order. Um, and from an on-premise perspective, obviously, it'll take a little bit longer. On-premise implementations will still work. Skype for Business Server is still a thing. Uh, but you should be ready or getting prepared to make that transition as well. Again, if you guys are using Skype for Business um, in the cloud right now, you're looking to transition, um, please reach out to your account executive. Reach out to me. Um, John.Pontius at PCM.com. Uh, we'd love to get you into one of our jump starts to get you starting to use Teams so that you're ready when the transition comes. Okay, great. There's a follow on question to that too. Um, teams also has chat, which you, you just mentioned. How is, the, how is this different from Kaizala? I guess I'll, I'll take that one too. So Kaizala is very much a mobile phone based chat application. It is the identity is the phone number, although there's some stuff that you can do around synchronization with Azure Active Directory and with Microsoft 365. Um, but what we're seeing right now is it's a mobile based chat application. Um, it uses the phone number as identity. Uh, it's meant for, you know, people to manage a remote business, remote branches, et cetera, via mobile phones, via chat application. Uh, Teams is a much more full featured, fully threaded, multi-channel chat environment. Uh, the identities used for it are Azure Active Directory, which is, can be synchronized with an on-premise Active Directory. So just as, you know, from a, what replaces what I'm currently using in my organization right now, chances are it looks more like Teams than it looks like Kazella. Although Kaizella does serve some very important purposes for, hey, I've got to communicate with a lot of people that are outside of my organization. I want to use their phone numbers. 
Uh, they're very heavily mobile. We don't know what the trajectory of Kaizella is right now. It is a standalone product currently. It's paid for standalone. Um, but Microsoft has lots of, you know, communications applications out there right now, like Yammer around Kaizella teams. Um, this is just me talking. Eventually, we're, you know, you imagine that there's going to be some type of collapsing uh, of all those different point solutions. Um, but I don't know what that looks like yet. Okay, great. And then there's another question. Does the Surface Dock support three monitors? I think the, um, that's a question we're going to need to follow up on. I'm not sure if the Surface Dock supports three monitors or or less. Um, you know, we have a, a whole Surface team who focuses just on Surface uh, products and accessories. Um, but if you could provide us your contact information, uh, we can certainly have someone from our uh, Surface team reach out to you and answer that question directly. Well, looks like there are no more additional questions. Um, Blair or John, is there anything else you'd like to, any other closing remarks you'd like to add? Okay, great. Well, thank you all for joining us today. And thank you, Blair and John, for your presentation.